The next part of our study of Algebra 2 is going to be focused around probability and statistics. Now to begin this, we're going to have to learn to build what's called a sample size or a sample space. The sample space is the list of all possible ways that something can happen. Now for this, we're going to need the terms that you see ahead in front of you. Particularly in this study, we're going to be looking at what are called permutations and combinations. But let's begin at the start. The fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle is if multiple events can occur in multiple ways, say m ways for the first event and n ways for the second, then the events can occur together in m times n different ways. Example of this, if you are getting dressed in the morning and you have three pairs of clean pants and five shirts, then you have three times five, 15 different outfits. That is the fundamental counting principle. Our next term is factorial. A method of quick consecutive multiplication, it's written as n factorial, the factorial looks like an explanation point, and is computed with that number n times the number below it times every natural number until you get to times 2 times 1. So if you have 10 things that have to be done, and you do 10 factorial, be 10 times 9 times 8 all the way down to times 2 times 1. Next, a permutation. This is an arrangement of items where the order is important. So if you have to do things a certain way or uh, changing them, such as watching a series of movies, you wouldn't watch the last movie, then the middle one, then the next last, and the first. If the order is important, it's a permutation. Next up, combination. And this is an arrangement of items where the order is not important. Very similar to permutation, the difference between these two, permutation, the order is important, combination, it is not. So we're going to look at each of these items individually. First is the fundamental counting principle. Fundamental counting principle tells us that if I have, say, three different items, and we're simply going to call them A, B, and C, then I can arrange them using different spots by multiplying each event so or each item. So again, back to example of getting dressed, A represents pants, B represents shirts, C represents different shoes. If I had three different pairs of pants, five different shirts clean, and two different pair of shoes or footwear, then I would simply say three times five times two, which is 30, I would have 30 different outfits. So this is 30 different sets of things that I could put on to wear for the day. So let's look at how this can be used. Many state license plates are in the form of three letters followed by three numbers. How many different license plates can a state make with this arrangement assuming all letters and all numbers are possible? So we have three spots for letters and then three spots for numbers. And if all items can be used at all times, then we simply need to look at how many different ways can we fill these spots. Well, for the letters, I have 26 letters for that first spot, 26 for the next one, 26 for the third, and I'm multiplying these. Then for the numbers, I'd have the digits 0 through 10, uh, sorry, 0 through 9, so there's 10 of them. And there's 10 for each of those three spots. So if I multiply this together, I come out with 17,576,000 different license plates that could be made from this arrangement. This doesn't include custom license plates where different amounts of the items are possible, just basic license plates. Next, how many different telephone numbers can be made in each area code? This one's going to be a little bit different. Your basic phone number is seven digits long. You have three to begin with, it's called the prefix, and then a four-digit number. Well, for most cases, we're going to look at the following situation. All these are numbers, 
but the first number cannot be a 1 or a 0. So that means we have eight possibilities there. One states that you, traditionally states you're going to be calling long distance. Zero gets you in touch with the operator. So we only have eight possibilities for that first one. But after that, we would have ten digits possible for each one. The digits zero through nine. So going through and multiplying these will give us a total of eight million different phone numbers. Basically, there are a few exceptions. For instance, no phone number can start out 911. So that would get rid of a set, but those are minor exceptions. So, fundamental accounting principle, find out how many different things are going to be happening, how many different ways it can happen in each spot, and just multiply those items together. Next up, we're going to be looking at factorial. And as stated, factorial simply is a form of multiplication. So if I were to write 10 factorial, that means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. These numbers grow very quickly and often will overwhelm a calculator's uh, ability to compute them. So when we deal with factorials, we're looking at smaller increments of numbers. For instance, how many different ways can five books uh, be put on dis a display shelf? So we use factorial if we have n items and n spots to fill without being able to repeat. So here I have five books. One, two, three, four and 5. And I'm going to place them in five different spots on the shelf. So how many items do I can I put in that first spot? Well, I can put one item, but I have five to choose from. How many for the next spot? I would have four left to choose from because one's already been placed. Now that two have been placed, that next spot can go with three, two, leaving me with just one for the last, so that means I have five factorial ways of doing this. Now multiplying this quickly, five times four times three times two times one is 120 different ways of putting five books onto a display. How many different ways can eight people form a line? So I have eight spots to fill and only eight people to fill them. So this is going to be eight factorial, which is eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Carrying this multiplication out will give us a total of 40,320. So eight different ways to do it. Looking at the fundamental counting principle and factorials gives you an idea of how quickly items, especially at, say, a restaurant, can be used. Restaurants sometimes will advertise, you know, you have millions of different ways that you can order something. For instance, at a sandwich shop. But if that sandwich shop offers eight different types of bread, ten different meats that you can put on it, and then vegetable toppings, which you can or cannot include, depending on your preference, it quickly multiplies up to very large amounts being done. So now let's take these ideas, the fundamental counting principle and the use of factorial and make what are called permutations and combinations. The way that you will often see permutations written is a capital P with two small numbers on either side. The first one is the number of items that you have to select from and the second is the number that are being selected. And the way we compute a permutation is that it is n factorial divided by the quantity of n minus r factorial. And this will quickly find a way of how many different ways something can happen if the order is important. And again, that is the key part of permutations. 
is that we're taking a select number of items out of the whole, otherwise we would just use factorial by itself, and the order is important. So, 12 friends have a bet on who will get the top four scores on an upcoming test at school. How many different ways can these four positions be filled? So what this will compute out as is 12 permutation 4. Or it's said it's a permutation of 12 items taken 4 at a time. Now doing the computation, we get 12 factorial divided by 12 minus 4 factorial. So 12 factorial written out is 12, 11, 10, and continuing on, divided by 12 minus 4 factorial. Well, 12 minus 4 is 8, so we would have 8, 7, 6, continuing on, like this. Now, as you can see through the long form of writing this out, most of these items are going to simplify. The 8s will simplify, the 7s will simplify, all the way down to the end, leaving us with just 12 times 11 times 10 times 9, which is much easier to compute. In fact, when we simplify this, we get the total or the product of 11,880. So with 12 people, if we're looking for the top four slots, this could be anything. If 12 people are participating in a race, if any situation where we have 12, the item, answer, the order that they come in is important and we're looking for the top four or the bottom four, we would be looking at 11,880 ways that it could happen. So this is what we do when the order is important. But we also have combinations which happen when order is not important. So let's take a look at those. Now the formatting for writing combinations is very similar to that of permutations. This time we have a combination of n items being taken r at a time. And because the order is not important, we actually have less possibilities. For instance, if I had four items, taking items one and two is the same thing as taking items two and one. Because the order doesn't, isn't important, the same two are what I have. So we have to have a way of getting rid of those repeats. And the way this is calculated is NCR, or a combination of N items taken R at a time, is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial, just like we had before, and that is minus, times another r factorial. And dividing by that extra r factorial gets rid of our repeats. So it allows us to have just what is there. So, situation. You have six movies stored on a tablet and time enough to watch two of them during a flight. You're going on a family trip. How many different sets of two movies can you watch? So what we have here is a situation of six choose two or a combination of six items taken two at a time and that is computed as six factorial divided by six minus two factorial two factorial now six factorial a lot easier than our twelve factorial we had but it is six five four three 2 and 1 all being multiplied and that is divided by 6 minus 2 is 4 so we have 4 factorial 4 3 2 and 1 times 2 factorial so we get another 2 times 1 now going through and simplifying this the 4 3 2 1 in the numerator will simplify with the 4 3 2 1 in the denominator and then 6 and 2 will simplify with each other. The 6 divided by 2 is 3 over 1. So in the end, we simply have 
3 times 5 divided by 1, which is 15. So if you have time and the order is not important, for instance, you didn't bring a series of movies where part 1 explains part 2, you would have 15 different combinations of numbers of movies that you could watch during this flight. Now this brings up an item that a lot of people use incorrectly. When we talk about how to store items, for instance, at a, if you go to the gym to exercise or at a locker, you have a method of storing the items. A lot of people say it's a combination that is needed to open the lock. Well, a combination, according to mathematical definition, the numbers wouldn't be tr uh, the order of the numbers wouldn't be important. So if you open your locker or your lock using 12, 17, 3, just as an example, and it truly was a combination, then you could order the, enter them as 3, 12, 17, 3, 17, 12, 12, 3, 17, 17, 12, 3, or 17, 3, 12, any of these would work in order to get the locker open if it truly was a combination. What you have, in fact, is a permutation lock because you have a set number of items and the order you enter them is important. So go back and review the terms and definitions, examples that were in this lesson. We're going to be using them as we, using them as we continue to talk about probability and statistics.